The Bostonian is Matt Peralt. This is our f- city. The book is Dave Sherapan. Pay him. Pay that man his money. Together, they are the Bostonian versus the book. You covered. You covered. Well, I covered. Follow the show on Twitter at Boston versus the book. How do you like them, Matt? Bringing you the best insight on sports betting news, Matt and Dave's daily picks, and an entertaining and unfiltered dive into the sports betting industry. Here's Dave Sherapan and Matt Peralt. And here we go. Hi, guys. Happy Wednesday. What's up? Welcome into another episode of the Bostonian vs. the Book. Dave Sherapan, Matt Peralt with you here live on our YouTube channel at Boston vs. the Book and on Twitter at Boston vs. the Book. We are replayed on Sirius XM channel 159 and on Sports Grid TV each and every night, six nights a week on Sports Grid. Lots of good things to get to, including Mike Corey, who was on the call for both NIT semifinal games yesterday, last night. And then Michael Duarte is going to come on in for NBC Sports, excuse me, Los Angeles, Dodgers, Lakers, a lot of good stuff to get into. Dave is wearing the Dodgers stuff today. Rain is the story in baseball today, Dave. A lot of rain outs. How are you today on this Wednesday, April the 3rd? Didn't even know what day it was. It's one day before your birthday. You didn't yes. even know what day it was. I don't know what day it is either. <laughs> I'm, I, I have so much going on. My favorite thing about today. We'll explain all of that. We do yes. that at the end of the show. Um, had an interesting thing come up last night. Jessica got a call and had to take care of something at one o'clock in the morning. Oh no! Yeah, uh, work wise, oh, and wow. um, you know she needed somebody to to go for the ride along. Okay, and usually there's someone available to do the delivery. We did it all. We went. We went. To the joint, picked up what we needed to pick up, had her do whatever she had to do, and um, delivered it to uh, a mom who needed it. Oh, didn't get home till about two thirty in the morning. Dang! So that was uh, that was a uh, interesting little thing and a reminder that you know there's still people that like you know that do stuff like that. Like it was right. I mean, you know, it was crazy. Uh, it's just uh, it's good. It was it was it. it, it it was a good result. Reminded me again why I could never really be a doctor. Take it too personal. I just, right. I just, you know, I mean, she just did what she had to do, and we got it. And I was like, all right, well, look, we can't wait for the dad to come pick the stuff up for the kid. Blah 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 blah. blah. Let's go. She's like, wait, we're going to deliver it too. And I'm like, yes, let's go. <laughs> Two thirty in the morning. I was like, oh, this is great. Some people's nights are just beginning in Vegas, 2.30 in the morning. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> some, some people yeah. are just starting out yeah, at 2.30 yeah. in the morning. So looks different. looks different at 2.30. It does. The strip doesn't, which is kind of funny. The strip looks like it's middle of the day. There's people <laughs> walking around. There's no difference in the strip. 2.30, whatever. Hey, we're live. So Mike Corey is going to get on here in yep. about five minutes. I have. This is the person who I did my first ever play-by-play broadcast with. This is the person that I did my first ever live remote broadcast with. This is the person that I did my first ever coaches show broadcast with. So I've been waiting for a time to bring Mike on, and this is fun because what happened last night in Indy was cool. You saw both teams. Indy is going to play host to the NIT final, which will happen on Thursday. Mike will be on the call for that as well between the Sycamores and the Pirates, Seton Hall in Indiana State. So we'll get to that. Dodgers continue to put up numbers yeah. first time in franchise history they've scored five or more runs in their first eight games so yeah, <laughs> yeah. their offense is alive and doing what we thought it was going to do which is score a ton of runs so we'll get to the dodgers game tonight against the giants with michael duarte remember when we have two guests we don't have a ton of time to do all the games so if there's a game you guys want us to break down a parlay a future something yes. super chats are available on our youtube channel when we're live to have us go and talk about whatever game you guys may need us to talk about. If you're on the chat, it's the bottom left-hand corner, little button you can press and get us to do a super chat. Before we talk basketball, though, there is a breaking news story to get into. Oh, the man. Buffalo Bills have traded Stefan Diggs to the Houston Texans for a litany of draft choices. This is the Hall, Dave, and I'm telling you that people who are in Buffalo are not exactly in love with this. The Texans got Stefan Diggs, a sixth round pick this year and a fifth round pick next year for a second round pick in 2025, not this year, 
okay. next year for the Buffalo Bills to get a second round pick for Stefan Diggs. We're not GMs, but the number did move. And it went from 20 to one on the Texans to win it all to 15 to one on the Texans to win it all. Let's start with Buffalo for a second. Is the window closing? Has it closed for the Buffalo Bills? Uh, you'd love it for it to be closing, wouldn't you? Oh, it's closing. There's no debate. Oh, you that. are. I mean, you're asking it's the closing. question. You already have is it, your answer. Is it closed? I saw your tweet. No, it's not closed, but it's I saw closing. Your tweet <laughs> at Sports Talk Matt. Uh huh. You saw that. Yeah. I mean, is it closing? It's people have been saying it was closing a year ago. Uh, is now it's like, I mean, is it slamming it shut? What are we going to do? We're going to start over. We needed to blow it up, change things. I don't know. It's, uh, I mean, you know, you, you you look like you're you're smiling on their downfall a little bit. Oh, of course I am, but I think it's really interesting to see what the Texans are doing. I think it has more to do with the Texans and the Bills. Texans think they got a shot here. Texans won the division last year. Yep. The division is ripe to win again. Yep. All you need to do is win your division and get in, let alone, you know, you got a shot. You get a home game. You win a couple more of those games during the regular season. Now you stay at home. Does it make them the best team in the AFC? No. 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 The Chiefs but are still I mean, the best. It's still they're, Patrick Mahomes in Kansas City. So until that is going anywhere, we're not going to talk about the Texans being the best team in the AFC, but I think they're the best team in the division. What did and it do to the division odds ooh, in the AFC East? That I did not look at. Yeah, that's see. where I need to, I need to see how far did it drop down? Cause the bills well, I mean, were now going to be the, the bills were the going to be bills the, favorite. Were the definitive favorite. Still the favorite at plus one sixty. dolphins plus one seventy, right behind them. So they're the same. That's why I, I just, in my head, I said, well, them and the dolphins are the same now. So, and again, I still got it. That's good <laughs> enough. I would, yep. I would, I would say, let's go, come get it. Like, who's betting the Bills today? Right. Well, Nobody. no one should be betting anything today. <laughs> That's the, the, I just, I don't believe in betting before the draft and the schedule comes out. I just don't understand how you can bet the NFL. Yeah, I don't either. I, I don't understand it. People are like, well, you get better numbers. Do you? Or are you betting blind? Like I, I need to know where the buy week. I mean, you just said it. It's, yeah. it's, it's, I mean, there's a lot of people in the space that are. I'd like to see their tickets, and I don't question people whether they're betting or not. But if you tell me you're betting now, I mean, I sat in the books for, like I said, almost 20 years here in Vegas, and a couple down in the islands. Nobody bets it now. It's minimal handle. It's good fodder. It's good talk for us for oh, content it's, it's people. Hot air to burn time until you get ah, to a topic hey, talk hey, about. Hey, I don't it's understand it's all the time. I just don't understand it. Let's do NFL win totals. Why? I don't get When's it. When's the bye week? How many road games in a row do you play? When do you play your rival? All very How many primetime games do you play? When do you no, play on Thursday? Yes. Like, I don't understand. There, there are so many factors that we don't know. And then who do you draft? Who do you trade? Like, if you were betting the Buffalo Bills yesterday, do you feel good about betting the Buffalo Bills today? Do you like no. that ticket? <laughs> You're oh. like, hey, I got a ticket on the Bills to win it all. I, it's the Bills year. Diggs gets traded the next day. Uh-oh. Um, T. Higgins, is he headed to Buffalo? Are they going to do a, a swing a huge deal for somebody? Mm. How will he work? I don't is know. Is that even in the mix? Of course. They're going to replace Stefan Diggs. Look, they, they gave him away for nothing. Mm. I mean, Bills fans are ferociously mad about what they got for a return on Stefan Diggs, but it's because they moved off of him for a reason. Like, Buffalo just isn't for like the hell of it. You know what I mean? They're not yeah. like, eh, let's we'll just trade Stefan Diggs. Like there's a plan there as to who they're going to bring in behind Stefan Diggs. But I just don't understand why you would go through this and bet this right now without knowing there are so many things that we do not know. I mean, D Weezy just came in the chat and said too many players go down preseason and in OTAs to place NFL futures now. It's fair. I mean, and that's, I, that's a well thought out uh, position to take. I can't say you're wrong. I, I agree with you 100%. There's way too much unknown. 
Yeah, and, and CBW is right. It's a very deep draft in wide receivers. That's 100% true. There's up to six wideouts that have first-round grades in the draft. So there's some really good players that are going to be available in the later Ooh, part of the draft. Well, I wonder if, like, you know, the draft props moved on that trade stuff. Like, does that increase the number of wide receivers taken in the first round? Because now it looks like the Bills are going to take a wide receiver in the first round. There's 18 moves that come after a move like this. Right. When you're in the book, it's so yeah. Fanduel does. I mean, I'm getting. You guys know how I feel about this crap. <laughs> like so, it's crap for the Bills to draft a, a a wide receiver. That that market has moved. It's minus two forty that the Bills will draft a wide receiver now. See what I mean? Yeah, minus two forty that the Buffalo Bills will draft a wideout with their first pick overall. Some stealth razor blade bomber probably put that in a Discord channel somewhere. And <laughs> bam. <laughs> blasted that out to everybody that said, look, now they got to take a wide receiver. And so hit you. that market, Man. that, that market did move. So we'll watch that. Obviously <sighs> the Texans are going to be a very interesting team. There's a lot of talent on that Texans defense. Like we know with D'Amico mm -hmm. Ryan's running it, but their quarterback CJ Stroud has a big time weapon. If you're a fantasy guy and we'll get to Mike Corey here in just one second and talk basketball. But if you're a fantasy guy, I've seen a lot of people put out these videos already in reaction to it. Like Nico Collins and tank Dell are now untouchable. Those were two guys. I bet a lot last year in the prop market because I loved what they were getting from CJ Stroud. Everyone knows about them now, but like having Stefan Diggs there does cut into their production. A hundred percent. You're going to see three wideouts. Dalton Kincaid is going to be a really big weapon now over the middle because they got speed on the outside. The tank Dell breaking of the leg is a little concerning and make sure he comes back healthy because he's a little guy, but he can fly. So hopefully the leg injury doesn't slow him down at all, but they got tools. They got weapons. My gut tells me the, the offensive line will be the next thing they're going to address for the Texans to protect CJ Stroud, but they got Will Anderson on the defense who can crush people. It's uh, D'Amico Ryan's is building, building quick. They're, they're on the come up. This is when you're supposed to do this, right? You have a young quarterback right on the rookie deal you go give them all the pieces and we go for it now we have success let's build on success right oh thank you jimmy jack yeah dalton schultz i'm thinking i'm not kincaid sorry kincaid used to be on texan sorry it's dalton schultz the way is the title i'm thinking of over the middle for them but there's going to be opportunities and then running the football i mean they got joe mixon so they, they they got you know you bring in a veteran running back who can get things down hard running running back so i like it I like are it they a lot. excited about this in Houston? Hell yeah, they are. And they should be. Right. They're ecstatic. Yeah. They're really excited. I mean, they should be. I mean, they haven't had a winner there ever. So even with JJ, they didn't have a winner. Ooh. So, I mean, you know. They had winning teams. They never a winner, play, though. Yeah, they won the division, and they ran into the Patriots or the Colts, so they ran into somebody. Oh, that, here he goes with the, the Patriots. Chiefs. Mention. Well, well, I'm just saying. That's what they ran into. Stupid like Letterman. Uh, we like we will never let them. We, we will never let the Texans live down the Letterman jacket show up in the playoffs thing. Oh or I guess it was end of the regular season. It wasn't in playoffs, but end of the regular season. We will never let them live that down ever. That they actually showed up like a damn high school football team and got their balls handed to them on a plate in oh, Foxborough. Oh, oh, watch got, it, Will. They, they got sent out. You're the, the favorite today. <laughs> they got You're sent the out. Favorite. They got sent out on an absolute plate by the Patriots in that game. Goodbye. Served. <laughs> Never to be seen from again. Oh, yeah, yeah, Those yeah. Texans Stop. letterman. Stop. <laughs> please. Well, let's let, let let's, let's go to basketball. Let, let's talk basketball. Let, let, let's let's go talk on. about what's going on here. Uh, this next guest has been someone I've been looking to talk to for a really long time here on the program. He is Mike Corey from ESPN, a guy that I well, I started my broadcasting career with at UMass. He was on the call last night for both games in the NIT. Mike, Matt, and Dave, what's up, my friend? Good to see you. What's up, guys? You guys are the best, man. Thanks. And, uh, I love it. I love it. Great to be on, man. This is this is good. Mike, it's great to see you. Great to meet you. My name is Dave. Um, I know you know this guy. We'll get to your relationship with him because now that I get guys that know him, really know him, we'll, we'll get to we'll get to the real meat and potatoes of this yeah, interview. Boy. But first and foremost, how much fun was that last night at that at calling those games? Because I mean, I was watching it with the Indiana State game. It was there was so much energy in that building. How much fun was it for you? 
Oh, it was, it was incredible. I mean, you know what? It actually goes back to the previous week. I was at Indiana State uh, for that quarterfinal game uh, once they beat Cincinnati. And it's like the place is packed. I mean, it was it was electric. I mean, th- this is I don't think people understand. That's why I was a little disappointed. And of course, everybody was that they didn't get to the NCAA tournament. It's like this is the best season that they're having in 45 years <laughs> since Bird. Okay, like in 1979, Larry Bird, they went 33 and one. They lost the title game, as we all know, to Magic Johnson. Uh, they got 32 wins this year. Uh, they, they possibly could have 33 tomorrow night and win the NIT. But the atmosphere in Terre Haute <laughs> at their arena sold out last Tuesday. One of the loudest environments I've been in all season. And then we go to Henkel Fieldhouse last night, and it literally felt like it was it was a home game for them. Like the entire crowd was Indiana State. Uh, I know you hit me up uh, there, Matt. I was like, I saw the line. I'm like, well, this, this could be a close game. And then they, they took care of it. So, I mean, with that environment, that atmosphere, um, it was it was awesome. It was, it was really a lot of fun. The second game went kind of how Dave and I thought. Seton Hall, another team that got left out, a Big East team that was angry that they didn't get left out. Even UConn coach Dan Hurley talked about the fact that we lost by 15 to those guys. We should, you know, that's a tournament team. What are you guys talking about? What does Seton Hall look like? And I know Georgia kind of ran out of gas a little bit, but Seton Hall looked pretty impressive last night in the second game. They did. Uh, they did. I mean, there was, uh, you know, certainly the energy went down the building a little bit there. But it's like, you know what, I did the first two games for Seton Hall in their first and second round game. And, and Fran Vrishella, who I was working with on the broadcast, I mean, he calls it. I mean, he's, he's done this forever. He said, this is how it's going to go. They're not going to come out really strong in game one. They're going to feel like they don't want to be there. Uh, they'll sneak by. Uh, then they'll be a little more excited for game two. They'll do that. And when they win that game, they think, oh, geez, one more win. And normally you'd go to the Garden because that's where the, the final four in the NIT is. Like it's exactly what happened. We did game one. They barely snuck by. They won in overtime. You know, they got the next game, you know, won fairly handily by, you know, almost 20 points. And then uh, they blew out the next team. And, you know, here they are into the final four. So you asked me back at the beginning, I'm like, yeah, I don't know if this team wants to be here. No, now they want to be here. And they got a lot of talented guys. And they're big. They're physical. They they can bag inside. Uh, they got good shooters. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm impressed with them now. And so – I think this is going to be a tight ball game, you know, tomorrow night. I mean, I, th- I think with the crowd on the side of Indiana State, it's hard to kind of root against them uh, for what they've done. But let's not forget they're going up against the Big East team. Uh, so it's it's going to be interesting. I think we're going to hear from a lot of people, well, it's basically a home game for Indiana State. The line is out. It's Indiana State minus three. The total is 159. I think it's going to be an entertaining game. I mean, you saw what Indiana State did yesterday with putting up points. They continue to put up points. It's kind of a contrast in style a little bit with these two teams. But the public favorite, the betting favorite, everybody's going to be on Indiana State. And and I still think myself that Seton Hall has a shot to win the game. Would you agree? Oh, they do. Yeah, no, no, they they do. It's not like uh, you know they're overwhelming. Oh, they're going to kill them. No. Um, what was the what was the total last night? For the NES second, it was like 163. It was really low. It yeah, flew over. It just over 160. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's all Monday morning quarterback now because 190 points were scored. But we were talking about it before the game. We're like, this could be like 103 to 102. You know, like we knew that. Indiana you State. almost called it directly, Mike. <laughs> well, I, you got to send P roll to text if you're going to call the exact <laughs> score. I got guys who can help us out with that. Correct. No, I could have. I, me though, and I, I don't want to be on the hook because if I knew I was coming on here, and I, um, not yeah, not good. But no, I mean it was. Well, this is the thing. I'll say it now because Indiana State wants to run, and they're going to run. That's the way they can win these games: is getting up and down the court, moving the ball, uh, knocking down some threes and transition. Well, and you saw their passing. I mean, it's it's they're either layups or three. And then when they get to the free throw line and they're number three in the nation at the free throw line, they shoot eighty uh, percent at the line. So. They're not as great in the half court set, but if you're not playing smart defense, they read the screens really well. They're either hitting the threes or they're getting guys in backdoor cuts. So they're going to put up points. So, I mean, if, if I had to say, you know, like the over is the play, I don't, I don't care. I mean, and right. if it does, all right, you tip your hat, but I don't think there's anybody that's going to, you know, completely shut them down and slow them down. They average almost 85 points a game. So, I mean, I, I, I'd be safe in doing that if, if I were people that were on that. Mike, do you have your broadcast sheet nearby? Do you have what you use for broadcast? Yeah, yeah. Right. You have to see this. You just have to see this. Like, 
Mike has been using this since we broadcasted together way back in the day. Oh, yeah, this is the sheet. This is like, this <laughs> is, uh, you designed this. Yeah. Yeah. So like, yeah, these are all the main guys that are going to play uh, down here. So like the reserves and stuff that don't really get in too much. And then, you know, when you look over here, it's all their stats, points, rebounds, um, field goal percentage, three point free throws, steals, minutes played. <laughs> and then you, know, you write a little information about the guys underneath, you know, if they're, where they're from and all this stuff. Starters are high. Self produce that my every book, game. Every game. Yeah, well, it's like so for the most part, for most of the season, I do. I did a lot of like ACC uh, stuff early, and I do the American uh, and the Atlantic Ten on the Friday night games uh, for ESPN, which is a lot of fun. So when you do the same team over and over, right? You just you pull up the chart again. You update all the stats. You know some of the stories. Um, I, it's been a lot of fun. I mean, I have been very fortunate to really start to get to know some of the coaches now and you get the numbers and I mean, sitting there with Fran last night, you should see the text messages that pop up on his screen. I just like glance over there. It's like Chuck Calperry, Andy Kennedy. And so I'm like, What's going on over here? He's like, Oh yeah. Hello, Thomas. I said this. I'm like, Oh, cool. You know, I'm like, I'm like, Hey, I got my buddy Joe from Brad. <laughs> You got Pete Roll bother you with a you text. Me, right? yeah. Can you come on the show? <laughs> <laughs> That's tremendous. Yeah, I mean, in terms of the NIT and calling it, I mean, I'm glad you got to go with the run all the way through. What has it felt like on the ground? Like after that first game, you mentioned that like Seton Hall, but for the other teams, like this is not the dance, but this right. is where they really try to ch like try out different things. Is it different with the law with the different uh, rules that are in place with the NIT to call it? Yeah, another crazy with the rules. I mean, they got the uh, the the court uh, or the lane is expanded to 16 feet. We haven't had any problem with that. I haven't seen you know three seconds or any of that kind of stuff. And then the uh, media timeouts in the second half. It's just something where instead of 16, 12, 8, and 4, it's now like 17, 14, 11, 8, and 4. When a team would call a timeout in the second half, it'd become a full timeout. Then you'd have like a media timeout 30 seconds later. So they're just killing that. So it's really the lane and the timeout situations. But no, I think what is good though for these teams is I think to realize like, you know how important this is, like, you know, for your brand and your status and moving forward. So it's like, okay, Seton Hall. Yeah, you got screwed. You didn't make the tournament. All right, well, are you going to go lose in the first round of the NIT, second round, say, I don't care? Or are you going to go and try to win a championship? And then that way the committee or people in the future go, oh, who's on the bubble here? Oh, Seton Hall. Geez, last time we left them out, they won the NIT. Like, you know what I mean? That's that's impressive. Like, I mean, I was sitting here today just, you know, and, and thanks again. And awesome to be with you and for what you said. It's like, I'm, I'm pretty grateful. Like, there's there's six teams left in college basketball playing right now. And, like, how many broadcasters? You know, I'm, like, thrilled to be doing this. It's, like, it's awesome. You know, and I think the teams feel that way, too, and especially Indiana State. Um, they did the same thing, though. Game one, they were down 20 points to SMU. Yeah. They come back in there and they're where they are now. So it just gives a lot for your brand and, and to keep playing ball, not to just be like, oh, it's the NIT. Remember when we were little kids? You wanted to play ball, you know? So Yeah. That's so when you when you look at that, I think there's so many people that go, oh, they should have gotten in, in a tournament. You know, they should have. But like now looking back for these teams that are here, you know, the, for the game tomorrow, it means that much more. You just kind of sold it the benefit of the NIT. But like as a fan, I think I can't speak for the teams. You're closer to them than. Are they, if they have their choice and they were honest, would they say this is better than going in the first round and being a 15 to 18 point dog and getting smoked in a, in a game in the NCAA? Right. It's a great point, Dave. I mean, everybody, you know, it's all Monday morning quarterback, right? That's the thing. I always yeah. go, oh, anything differently. Like to me, I always say the answer is no, because like you always hope to make the best decision at the time. You hope it's going to be great. And of course, if you know the results or all the answers, you're going to be like, oh, should have done that. Like, you're absolutely right, though. They might have lost. Hey, maybe they would have won a game. You never know. But if they lose, like, oh, we went to the NCAA. Yeah, and you lost your first game. Or no, actually, now you've won a championship. Like, you won an NIT championship. I think, like we said earlier, it takes a game or two to get your legs back on you and go, all right, let's 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 play ball here. Because I think it's I think it's better for them, really, to be honest with you. But now the trick is, are they going to keep their coach? Can they keep their players? <laughs> uh that's the that's the question after every season, to be honest, for every team. Mm. 
Mike, you and I were fortunate enough to be in school when UMass went to the Final Four and they opened up what they call the house that Calipari built. But when they played previously in the Mullen Center, they played in the Curry Hicks cage, which is where Rick Pitino played and Dr. J played. What's Hinkle like? Is it like the cage? Is it that small? I've never been there. What's it like to broadcast a game there? And what's the environment inside of Hinkle? No, yeah, it's, it's, it's totally different. I think the cage is like around 4,000 people. Hinkle's got like 9,100 seats. It uh, goes oh. to up like on each side behind the uh behind the bench and on the opposite side the end zones are like shorter okay there's only like a few rows and then you have like an upper deck that lands right on top of it so that's pretty neat like there's fans in the upper deck literally right you know above the court um it, it is it's just historic i mean it's uh it, it sounds great uh the acoustics are really good the sound system's good you got a dj up on top deck behind one of the baskets playing during the timeouts um it's Indiana basketball, right? I mean, everybody's like, this is, you know, this is pretty darn cool. Oh, he got a text. I didn't do it. Was that me? Or was I Mike do it? Uh, I don't know. He got a text. Call Actually, coming in here. There he is. Uh, we yeah. We're back. Perfect. We're back. <laughs> and high demand here lately uh, because of I doing like this. I, I can't tell you. Like, it, it is. When you're on ESPN, when you're on the flagship, you know, you feel like, all right. People are watching this thing tonight. You know, it's right. a lot of fans. Um, but uh, no, no, Hankel Fieldhouse, it's awesome. I mean, it's but it's definitely different. It's double the size of the cage. It's not really that small. Um, but uh, when the when the fans are in there and it's packed, it's it's awesome. But a very unique environment. I don't know if anybody caught it, but last night um, in the uh, under first the first time out of the second half, we did a little scene uh, from the from the Hoosiers where they walk in, yes. the guy takes his hat off, and you know you walk oh. around. And we used the measuring tape, but we measured the lane uh, to give a little thing on. On the uh, on the new rules, so they told me I had to wear the the beanie there, Matt, and I was like, oh. really? And do I have to wear this? And I'm like, this is, and I'm like, I was honest because like I need a haircut. I'm like, this is gonna mess up my hair. I'm like, I did it really well tonight. I don't want to do this. I'm like, really? Come on, Mike. I'm like, fine. I'll wear the hat. We did three takes of it. He's like, no, no, all right, do it again, do it again, Mike. Next time you walk out, well, a little longer before you take off the hat. Like we filmed this scene, and we aired it like right at the uh, beginning of the second half. It was pretty fun. Needed That's that at the women's tournament. Need someone to go measure the three point line at the women's oh. tournament. All oh, right, yeah, you could have used their help there. <laughs> could have used that, uh, Mike. All right, so we've seen the, the sheet, and we've heard that you two knew each other back in college. We need something here, <laughs> like that. You know, this is like this is your life. Every time <laughs> P. Ralt brings on somebody, I use it as an opportunity for you. <laughs> To tell a story or something as he turns 47 tomorrow and yeah, we can Mike, live, we're relive old. the college days. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, Mike, give me something, anything. The people know him as being, you know, some controversial blowhard from Boston who just talks about the Patriots all the time. How did it all start at UMass? <laughs> Yeah, it's hard because I I, I I agree with him on a lot of these things. I'm from the Lake one too, you know. I know. <laughs> Listen, I went to I went to the Patriots games when they sucked. Okay, way back in like the '80s, you know, in the crappy little Foxborough Stadium and the you know, you metal bleachers or whatever. Shit. Yeah, I do. I used to take my buddy. We used to go there. It was awesome. And so people are like, oh, you're from New England. Listen, we dealt with a lot of crap, all right? They sucked. And then, you know, now we're obviously very spoiled. Same thing with the Red Sox. Like, you kidding me? I'd go to the games with my dad. We'd drive two hours from Brattleboro, Vermont, where I grew up. And he'd want to leave in the seventh inning because they had the bases loaded and nobody out. And they couldn't score. He's like, let's go home. I'm like, Dad, yeah, this is the way it worked, you know? So I, I, it's hard for me to go against my man Matty here about uh, the boss and <laughs> stuff that he talks about. But – uh, no, we had we had so much fun. I mean, we, we did like live remotes in front of the like the pizza place where everybody goes afterward from like you one to two a.m. I was a part of it. We went to Hawaii together for UMass women's basketball. We're hanging out on the beach and snorkeling and doing all this crazy stuff. I mean, uh, it was it was fun. I mean, we had we had a blast, and uh, he had his own show. I had my own show. I mean, uh, from the radio to you know just class partying, hanging out. I mean. Those those were the best days. I mean, it really it really was. Like I wouldn't have traded that time uh, without these stinking phones and everything else we got today. To be honest with you, um, everything just meant a little bit more. So I don't know. I wish I had some dirt or some crazy stories for you, Dave, to help out. I know you're looking for something. I mean, I'm not just trying to be nice here, but it, he's a great. Well, here's guy. the thing, though, Dave, because like, like, Mike and I were both the co-directors for the sports department. 
we went on different trips. Like it was almost like vice president, president, like we couldn't be on the same trip because one of us had to be back to make sure the broadcast actually worked. Oh. So like all the crazy stuff that happened on the road, Mike and I didn't travel all that much together. So he would go right. and I would go and he would go and I would go because you're only, only one play by play guy and you have a color guy. But right. I mean, look, I, I credit a lot and you guys can hear this because I've talked about it a lot with the business side. Mike taught me a ton about, how to approach people with sales and how to get people motivated and excited. The sales packet that this guy created that UMass Radio still uses today, he printed a binder tape. It was this thick. He left it as to how to do sports radio in college. And he left it for UMass kids to go ahead and learn years later. We're not college for 20 years. It's still there. It's a hell of a legacy, Mike. It, it really it, is. It better and, still be there. I, you're right. I left it. Now that you reminded me, I'm like, I told these guys, don't lose it. I think it was like two years ago. They better not have lost that thing. <laughs> so Some of it hands, still applies today. Without a doubt. A, a ton of, <laughs> and I, I talk about it with Dave. We talk about on our show about, about how to fundraise and how to get people involved, have keep sponsors interested and be a part mm -hmm. of what we're doing. And a lot of the things that you and I did at UMass, Dave and I are doing now. I mean, a lot of it, the similar Literally. calls and conversations with people about why they should be involved and, and the benefit of being involved in sports media and how to, how to produce it for you in your career. I, I saw something yesterday that said, if you could talk to your 18 year old self, what are three words you would say to yourself? And I thought it was pretty interesting, but like, mm. think about you and me outside of in front of Antonio's pizza. And if I said to you, you know, in April of 2024, you're going to be calling the NIT final on ESPN. Would you have believed it? Uh, not really. I mean, I, 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 you know what? I mean, we, we, we did, we dreamed about this kind of stuff. I mean, I remember being uh, right at Delaware, right after I graduated doing games there on the radio and, ESPN would come in and do the games. We grabbed the microphones, faked, like, pretending like we were there. We took pictures of each other. I'm like, yeah, this this would be the day. You know, this will be cool. And then, you know, it happened. And, uh, and I mean, I, I don't know. I just, there was a there was a letter that I wrote. Uh, and then they asked you, where do you see yourself in 10 years type of thing? Back when I was at college. And I remember because I loved NBC at the time, too, which I worked for as well, fortunately. Because uh, Marv Albert was my favorite growing up with basketball. And I wrote, I was like, oh, I'd love to do NBC and be on NBC and maybe do the Olympics someday. Sounds like a crazy dream. But, you know, I think it would be attainable with just hard work and doing, you know, what you can. And I found it years later. And I'm wow. like, holy crap. I'm like, I, in 2006 or uh, 2008, did the Olympics for NBC and started working with them. And I'm like, I can't believe this. But, like, it is because, you know, you, I know you, man, and you guys, you bust your ass. And, like, that's it. And I try to tell the students. I know you teach a class, Matt. I do the same thing. I teach a class at the University of Delaware. I said, guys, please, all it takes is a little extra ounce of effort and determination or whatever because everybody thinks it's just be given to them today. Yeah, you would set yourself apart over everybody else. So I'm like, just bust your ass. So like, you do that, and you make waves, and you and you get things done. I can tell a story, Mike. When did what did you do to get the job at Delaware? What's this? How did you get hired as the voice of Delaware? Mike became the play-by-play -play voice of Delaware football and basketball men's right out of college. But I I, I forget the story. How did you? Because I copied you, and it got me the job at UVA when I got the job, but how did, how did you get the job again? I can't remember how you got it. Yeah. I, I sent all these like little attention getting items and, uh, and uh, I sent like FedEx packages with like our demo CD at the time, CD, everybody. Yeah. Uh, uh, along with like handwritten Can't notes, Google it, what he's talking about. Is <laughs> yeah. Google it. I still have this boom box that I got when I graduated from high school and I have to keep it. Cause that's the only way I can play the cassette tapes from our, uh, games per back in the day so I, I have it's a dual cd cassette player it's i'll send work. you a picture it works oh it's awesome oh, i have mini discs <laughs> the mini <laughs> discs, yes i have mini discs <clears throat> that i cannot play these are this is us this is us from umass that yeah. cannot be played this doesn't exist anymore a mini yeah, disc I, player does not exist anymore i was working on this project man you know and i'm like i'm like oh wait a minute i got that on dvd and i'm saying to myself crap I don't even have a DVD player. How the hell am I going to play this? I'm like, what am I going to do? Like, I, I, DVD's gone now. Like, I mean, this isn't crazy. So, no, but it, it was, so what I did was I had all these little things. Like, I sent, like, a bunch of losing lottery tickets and megabucks and said, why take your chances and gamble when you can go for a sure thing? And I put my picture on there, Mike Corey, FedEx it to three different guys at the radio station, took another, like, thing, like a clock, like a little mini plastic clock, and put my picture on it, said it's Mike Corey time. Set, like, a basketball with my name on it, like, Mike Corey's on the ball. Uh, I, did, I set pizzas. I ordered pizzas from 
from like a local pizza place in town, had them delivered to the radio station, said, enjoy your lunch from Mike Corey. Uh, you know, I, I pulled out all the stops. That's what yeah, I copied. The pizza. I had the, guy, I had the guy spell out. I, I had a guy write on the pizza box, are you hungry? And they spelled out, not as hungry as me in pepperoni pizza. Oh, and that's awesome. It was, yeah. said, it was said. So I slipped yeah. the guys 20 bucks to, the, to W-I-N-A in Charlottesville, Virginia. To a guy yep. named Dan Miller. And so I copied that. When I heard Mike do that, that spurred me. And then that got my job. So kids, you can steal those ideas because they still don't work right now. They yeah, I grabbed right I grabbed a bunch of uh, like address books, you know. Do we have those anymore? Well, anyway, I ripped out all the pages except for C and wrote Mike Corey. There's only one name you need to know. Sent that to everybody. I mean, it was it was a perfect storm. I mean, they wanted like someone young. It was a rock station. They needed somebody to sell. And I guess who else, you know, who's trying to sell themselves, right? You know, so it's like. But look, some of that stuff works, man. I just talked to one of my guys said, hey, a handwritten thank you letter to somebody. He gave him a job over somebody else because he got that, you know, because nobody does wow. that stuff anymore. So it's like, because what are you going to do? The same thing everybody else does? Email, you know, do all that, you know, text <laughs> message. Come on. Mike, I have yeah. three daughters, 2018 and 10, and I've coached girls now for a decade. And I'm the oldest of five. You have to try stuff. If you fail, so what? what? Like you yeah. learn what works better and stuff. It's these are you don't know if it's a good idea until you try it. It right. may not have worked, but it's fun. One, it two, it's different. And if you take a chance, who knows? Maybe they'll say yes. There's nobody right. selling you better than you, right? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you just, just take a chance. Try it. I mean, try something different. Like, that's the thing. You know, it's uh, even with like your bosses at work. I was just thinking the other day, it's like, you know, how many people probably hit our guys up and like, oh, can I get this game or what about that game or whatever? It's like, screw that, man. Like, what am I adding to the table? So like, I'll email my boss and say, hey, here's something I saw on TV the other day. Oh, here's a rule. Hey, let's tell our people, make sure we do this. And they're like, all right, this guy's like, you know, helping us here he's he's adding to the company he's adding to our coverage as opposed to bsing about what game they have you know or not having yeah contribute don't be a take right right contribute something be a part of the yeah. team you know help grow the business help grow what you're doing and knowing that you're thinking about that on a tuesday evening when you're not doing a game and you right. see something that you say okay that we why don't we try that can we do this can we do that yeah i mean i tell my kids all the time that you know in order to, to really differentiate yourself you have to live the life like you and i and, and dave now too yeah. we, we, we live the life right Every i mean day. you're on the road a ton you're away from your family a ton because you love what you're doing and you you love the fact you can do it but you live this every day right i mean this is what you do every day right uh -oh. did you hear me your uh -oh. audio just went mike your audio just went click your audio i think you're out your yeah. audio's out the headset's not a fan of his. Do we lose you? How about no. That? Oh, you muted yourself. You back now? Unmute, mute. Earpiece is gone. That's it. Uh oh. Oh no. <laughs> this is a first. <laughs> the guy <laughs> muted himself. He's on TV <laughs> doing games, and we we somehow blasted his audio out. Do we have it or no? No, it's all right. Mike, thank you for coming on. We appreciate thank you, man. Mike. You're the best. Thank you for being here. We appreciate it. Have a great call. We'll have you on again. We'll have you on again, man. Thank you for coming on. We appreciate it. That's Mike Corey from ESPN joining us here on the Bostonian versus the book. It was, it was, we got Michael Duarte coming on anyway. So it actually worked out pretty well there, but that's awesome to get him on. That was, that was super fun for me to go and have a little conversation with him about, about what's going on with that. have a blast. Us? The two of you had to have a blast. You know, it was it was awesome for I mean, I don't really remember a lot of um that like, like we we were able to do so much in such a short period of time right. because Mike drove this fire in all of us. And, and Mike really was a huge I mean, Mike, Mike Reese, if you guys know Mike Reese from ESPN, Mike Reese was the first. He was our when Mike and I were sophomores and freshmen, Mike Reese was the was the guy a year ahead of us. He was the sports director. So Mike Reese went on to become the beat writer for the Patriots for the last 20 years for ESPN.com. And so we watched them and we watched what they did, but Mike was a writer more than a broadcaster. Right. Mike and I wanted to be Mike Reese, Mike Corey and I wanted to be broadcasters. 
We wanted to figure out a way. And I knew I had to be on the air a lot because Mike's voice is incredible. I mean, that's why he's on ESPN. Right. And he would do these amazing Marv Albert impersonations and whatnot. And like, right. we just, and then he got to know Mark Vandermeer. Mark Vandermeer was the play-by-play -play voice of UMass. And Mark kind of took Mike under his wing. Mm -hmm. Mark became the voice of the Texans. He was the voice of the, of my, he went from UMass to Miami for the Hurricanes. And then from the Hurricanes to the Texans. So he's still the voice of the Texans. He's been there since their inception. He's been the play-by-play oh, wow. voice okay. since then. And so Mike, Mark would come and talk to us and Mike worked really closely with, with Mark Vandermeer and helped to craft his style and helped him really become a play by play guy. I did play by play, but I knew I wasn't going to be good at it. I took the job. I went down there. I did a year professionally, went to Hawaii again. After Mike and I went there, I went back to Hawaii the next year. And I realized I, I had had long conversations with people about it wasn't going to work. I knew it wasn't going to work for me to right. be a play by play guy. And so I entered the, that's why I went to Alabama. Because I was just the universe working in the right ways, answered a job, flew down there, got offered the job, and then the talk radio career began. And I would have been out of the business in a year if I had actually done play by play. Right. I would not. I would not be sitting here today. I was not good at it. I didn't like it. Right. I I love the travel. The travel of it is what I loved. Right. I didn't love the actual call of the games. It wasn't, it, it wasn't fun for me to do it at all. So getting this, you know, Mike and I went different paths, but now for us to be able to come back and reconnect. It's awesome. Super cool. Super, super cool. Yeah. All right. Let's continue. On another Mike. We got another Mike, Michael. Uh, Michael. 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 Yes. Right. He gets to watch the Dodgers every day. He's joining us here on the Bostonian versus the book. As we go from interview to interview, Michael Duarte, NBC LA joining us here on the Bostonian versus the book. Michael, you and I have talked on the radio a ton. This is the first time I can see you as we're talking. How are you? Welcome to the show. Thanks for the time today. Good. Yeah, man. I haven't seen you since uh, Super Bowl Radio Row in Vegas, so it's good to see your face again. I like it, and I like Dave's hat. Yep, we're both rocking Dodger blue today. I like it. <laughs> Absolutely. I got I got a, a, a mess of them, actually. I'm going to try to keep up um, with all of it. Keeping up with the Dodgers every day, Michael, is got to be fun, but like – in this space, their season win total is 103 and a half. Is it like around the team? Like, well, I mean, obviously not the team, but the fans are like, let's just get to the playoffs. Like, they're going to win 100 games. This is so easy. They win every day. It's, it's, it's like a matter of fact for a lot of fans. Yeah, one thing, Dave, that we know about here at NBC, where I work, is uh, is in the 90s, it was must-see TV, and that's what the Dodgers are right now. So everybody is tuned in. Everybody wants to see how Shohei Otani acclimates. They want to see how Yamamoto acclimates to MLB hitters and, and if he's going to continue his success that he carried over from Japan or if he's going to have more games like he had in Korea in his MLB debut. But to your point, you know, the fans are excited. They're going to come out here and they're going to pay their $30 for their Micheladas and pay their $40 to, <laughs> to hand over to Frank McCourt to park. And uh, they're going to go out there and they're going to cheer them no matter what. But I think for this team, as you mentioned, it's World Series or bust. And they want to, They were so disappointed the last two years in these Dodgers playoff runs, uh, losing to division rivals in the division series, that uh, I think they're ready for a run this year. And look – the other day when the Dodgers were in extra innings, they lost 6-5 to the St. Louis Cardinals. Bases loaded two outs for Shohei Otani. This was the moment that Shohei Otani joined the Dodgers for, right? He wanted to play in these big moments where he has an opportunity to win the game, to, to be the hero and have the walk-offs. He ended up popping out with an infield fly meekly in that game, but I think he's going to have about a dozen or so of those moments throughout the season to prepare him for the postseason where he's going to have to perform where Dodgers fans uh, – will not be as happy he's on the team moving forward if he can't. Michael, compare the environment around the team before the Otani interpreter news and after the Otani interpreter news. How has it changed? Is the team much more protective? Is there less access? Or is it the same? What, what has happened in the wake of what this really was the biggest story in the month of March? Yeah, that's a great question, Matt. And it's funny because the story has changed more times than leaves change colors. I'm trying to acclimate myself with um, exactly because because obviously this happened in Seoul, South Korea. I wasn't with NBC didn't send us to Seoul, South Korea from my we heard from my colleagues. Uh, definitely the day that the story came out, 
everything changed within the clubhouse, the kind of the open freeness talking, everyone kind of happy, excited for the season to start, excited to be in Korea where they can experience new food, new places, new culture. Everything just kind of got hushed and whispers and there was rumblings and kind of people talking and no one knew what the story and how the story had changed so much. Ipe is gone. Uh, I just did a story, a profile on Will Ireton, the, the Dodgers longtime nine year employee who was thrust into that new interpreter role. Uh, so you can go check that out and read it because it talks about how this guy had been an interpreter before, but he'd been in performance for, for the Dodgers, you know, with analytics for the last four years, how he's thrust back into the spotlight to do this again. Even he's not sure what's going on. But now that we've had about a week to settle, what I can tell you is that that kind of the initial reaction and how the clubhouse was initially has all changed. It's actually a lot more open. And I think the unintended consequences of firing Ipe and getting him out of there was by removing Shohei Otani's shadow for the last 11, 12 years since they were with the Nippon Ham Fighters in Japan together, uh, by removing the guy that's his best friend, his self-proclaimed business partner, the, the guy who's with him at home, his personal trainer, you can go on and on. Suddenly, Shohei doesn't have that buffer, that guy he can rely on, the guy that's between him and everyone else. So if he wants to communicate or say something to his teammates, he goes directly to them now. He's a lot more open. He's a lot more outgoing. Uh, and he's a lot more friendly to be around. And players and coaches have told me they like that as well because they can just go directly to the source now to communicate with him rather than have to go through Ipe, the buffer, and not knowing you know, if it's being translated perfectly or back and forth. And, and Shohei understands English, so when you can talk to him, he's understanding everything you're saying, even if he might need a translator to repeat it back perfectly. So I've been told that's been a breath of fresh air. And after he spoke at that press conference where he just kind of backed up the story that his lawyers and his agent and his team has now put out there that this was a massive theft that he knew absolutely nothing about after that came out i kind of thought he'd hide behind that lawyers and and agent and hide behind that wall of safety if you if you will but no he's already spoken to the media three times um he's available the japanese media like that because there's hundreds of them at dodger stadium every single day that follow his every move and so the the only caveat is you can't ask him about the scandal anymore, but you're able to ask him anything you want about baseball. And so that's kind of how things have changed uh, within the organization since the news and the story broke. And then the last thing I'll say to it, Matt, was that internally in the clubhouse, all the teammates want to get this behind them and focus on baseball, focus on the season. They seemingly have been doing it. I think the only one that's maybe affecting it to play is Shohei Otani, who's you know, batting close to the Mendoza line and right. hasn't had a home run this year. The guy who led all of baseball in home runs last season hasn't homered yet. But, you know, he could he couldn't he could wait until May to hit his first home run as a Dodger and they might just be still in first place and be just fine based on how they're going. So that's the big changes and all his teammates seemingly have his back right now. Michael, do the fans care? Do you I mean like because I I thought about it a little bit and you know, when Bonds was in San Francisco the most protective people of him were the Giants fans. And whether anybody cared, it was like, does the media care more about this than the fans do, this whole thing with Shohei? I think so. I, I Well, I think the media is interested in getting to the truth. And I think the original questions that Tisha Thompson from ESPN first wanted to know, which is, why is your name – and your bank account appearing on these, they had two wire transfers of 500,000. They know for from their sourcing, there's actually nine wire transfers over two years of 500,000. Why do these wire transfers have your name on it? Why are they from your bank account? And that is the big question that still we don't know the answer to. And if it is, he didn't know then, and it's Ipe, then how did Ipe have access to your account? How was there not protocols set up was a financial advisor an accountant your agent how was somebody else not alerted of this those are the questions we still want to know and as media our job is to get to the truth and find those out and so we still want to know whether we're blowing it out of proportion or not i feel like we now still two weeks removed from this have more questions than we have answers and that's the biggest thing here now for fans which was your original question dave 
uh, Dodgers Twitter is is a crazy place to be. It's a crazy <laughs> place to live if you've ever been on there, right? You get, some fans will turn on their own team in a heartbeat, their own players, which is astonishing to me. And Matt, you probably know this with the Red Sox. Uh -huh. um, but And then there's others who will always cape up for the Dodgers and, and the sky is never falling. It is always sunny and perfect and we're going to win the World Series every time. Um, I've seen a little bit of both when it comes to the Otani scandal. There's a lot of memes out there that Dodgers fans are posting, which are pretty funny. Uh, including one of my personal favorites where they they take his words in Japanese in that press conference uh, and then they transcribe it at the bottom with his picks for that day. Or that yeah, day. they're doing like, it every day. Otani, anytime leave. home run. Yeah, <laughs> Dodgers plus 103 wins on the season and while he's talking in Japanese. That's a funny one. But the fans, for the most part, they don't seem to care. They seem to believe his story. I think, and I'm not going to get into uh, assumptions here or or what, what could be or could not because that's kind of irrelevant at this point until more comes out and what can be proven in court and what we think and what we speculate about is totally different. But uh, of all the versions of possibilities in this story that has more twists and turns than a roller coaster, the one that Otani is saying is the truth, while certainly probable, uh, especially if we knew more information about the guy, which he's so private and secretive and protective makes that difficult. But uh, it seems like the less likely of all the scenarios, right? That the person you spend 16 hours a day with for the last 11 years, know, you know absolutely nothing about him. You know absolutely nothing about what we do. I mean, Matt and I can talk for five minutes when we run into each other in Vegas and we're talking about betting lines and sports bets <laughs> and who we got and all the time. And that's just normal guy talk. So there's a lot of, Surprising to that, surprising that any bookie in this entire country that gives their clients a line of credit would give minimum 4.5 million line of credit to a guy making 85,000 a year as an interpreter. Uh, there's a lot of questions here, and I just think that the story that's out there uh, is the least likely of all of them. But Dodger fans, to your point, seem to believe it. They seem to buy it. They seem to support it. And at the end of the day, from just talking to everyone, if he didn't bet on baseball, like if if that if if, it, if that's the thing at the very least we can prove definitively that none of these sport bets whether it was Ipe or Shohei or whatever were on baseball they don't really care you know mm -hmm. whether you bet yeah. through an illegal bookie or you did it on DraftKings or on Bet Online or you know you did it in a sports book in Vegas they don't seem to care either way and if you didn't bet on baseball they're ready to just keep it moving and get this story over with. Michael, one thing that happened during the offseason, which I found to be interesting, and not that it was a precursor to the Atani story, but it kind of showed a light into the life or the lifestyle for Atani, that he got married over the offseason and the woman just like appeared. Like there weren't pictures with him and her. There wasn't like a long standing relationship. He just put it out on social media of like, this is my wife. Is that what it's like to be around him, that he has a very tight circle that not many people know much about who he actually is as a person? Correct. And I think that's now changing now that he pays out of the picture, as I mentioned, that buffer's kind of gone. But you're talking about teammates on the Angels who played with the guy for six years. They had no clue he was dating anyone, let alone engaged, let alone married. Same thing with his Dodgers teammates who had been around him for about a month since spring training had started. They had never seen him with a woman. And the other thing to me was Japanese media hounds this guy. They have cameras on his every move all the time, 24-7 almost, as much as they can. And he's never been photographed or seen with a woman either here or in Japan. And the one thing I can tell you is, you know, and probably why he had to come out with it was because she was going to travel with the team to South Korea. Uh, she Shohei has his own suite at Dodger Stadium that she's in. It's decorated with Otani's jerseys from across his career. His dog gets to come and hang out in the suite for every game. So I think they knew the cat's going to be out of the bag soon. You're going to be able to see her. She's going to be on the team flight. The Dodgers are going to post it. And so he came out and said, you know, I'm now married and this is who it is. And But that first picture that the Dodgers posted and Shohei reposted on his Instagram account, the two of them, him and his wife, getting ready to board the plane to go to Seoul, South Korea. That went, that was on every television screen in Japan. It was on front page of every newspaper. Everyone wanted to know who she was, uh, when they got married. They wanted to know every detail about it. Now, that wasn't here in every newspaper or on TV here in, in Los Angeles, let alone the United States. But in Japan, his every move, his dating life, it's everywhere. Does that mm. continue? Like... 
I don't think, I mean, I'll ask you, does anybody here care fan wise? Does anybody over there, Michael, actually care? Is everything okay? Are yeah, you- hold on. Oh, okay. <laughs> I no, I up. thought he was, uh, I thought somebody might have knocked on the door. dog out. Just let the Michael. dog out. <laughs> All right. I thought somebody might have knocked on your door. No, no, no the side door is door. right here. Does anyone care about his personal life? Well, I, I mean, as a guy, I mean, I don't care, but I know the female fans, even here in Los Angeles, <laughs> they care a whole lot. Right? There's some videos out there on Instagram and TikTok of just women in general from either Los Angeles to Japan in tears over the news that this man is married and now he's no longer available and off the market. Um, it's similar to the reaction a famous A-list actor or a pop star would have when we kind of hear about this. This is the kind of attention o- o- Otani gets. It's it's Taylor Swift-esque, if you will, because um, you know it is international at this point, especially in a in a big country and continent like Asia, where uh, he's he's the most popular sports figure they have. Michael, the team obviously has gotten off to an historic start. Five runs a game in every game so far that's been played. Mookie Betts has been absolutely outstanding at the plate so far this year. I think five home runs he now has to start mm-hmm. the season. Is that covering up that Otani has done nothing at the plate? Is he fortunate that the offense is clicking even though he's not? Yeah, I mean, he's working walks from time to time. He's got a few doubles. Um, but, yeah, he, when Mookie Betts is hitting five home runs, and, and I just saw the line move, from Ronald Acuna as the favorite on the Braves as, yep. as the MVP, the reigning MVP, to now it's Mookie Betts, the favorite after a week through the season. So when he's playing like that, and by the way, guys, it doesn't just stop there. You have Freddie Freeman batting over 400, Will Smith batting 429 to start the season. And one of the the underrated uh, additions from this team in the offseason when they spent over $1.5 billion was Teoscar Hernandez, a guy who was a former all-star with the Toronto Blue Jays, struggled a little bit in Seattle, but batting seventh, I think, in the lineup or sixth yeah, in the like lineup well. here. And he's got four home runs and been absolutely <laughs> crushing it. So, you know, that was the one thing. I saw a joke. Um, I don't know if you saw it. I think it was opening day, Otani's first at bat of opening day. Mookie Betts had let off with a walk. <laughs> Otani ropes a double down the line, runs through the stop sign and gets himself in a pickle and thrown out in the pickle trying to go to third. And someone said he's not used to having guys on base. Uh, and that's why he didn't, he didn't pick up Dino Ebel at third base. And, and I know that's a joke and we mess about that, but there is truth to the matter that he doesn't have to be the only guy on his team anymore, uh, especially when Mike Trout is – inevitably injured for half the season as he is every year in oh, down yeah. in Anaheim. So when you don't have to be the guy, when you don't have to be the run producer, the sole guy that's responsible to knock guys in and come up in those big situations, I think he's going to like that and get used to it. I think it's going to alleviate some of the pressure that he probably had down in Anaheim, uh, but he won't have with the Dodgers because, okay, you can come up in a big spot and you can strike out or, walk or whatever and you got max muncy will smith the oscar hernandez behind you gavin lux had his best game as a dodger uh here on tuesday night and so he might be his bat might be finally warming up so this is a this is a team that it's like spam in your inbox right nobody wants to see these hitters if you're an opposing pitcher oh. and and to matt's point i saw matt talking earlier about fading the rockies bet every single game yep if you take the over of every single Dodgers game this season, you'd have the same record they do at six and two. Uh, and one of those games, two of them, I think you lose by one run. Right. You know, they're putting up right now, I think they're averaging six and a half on the year. And believe it or not, it's only like fourth in the league, but they've played more games than anyone else but the Padres, obviously. So they have a little bit larger of a sample size, two extra games. But, you know, if they're going to keep this pace up, which they might, they might score six, five, six runs a game. If you're going to do that and they over, over under set eight and a half every day, you might want to take it because you're just basically betting on whether the other team is going to get three runs or not. And you can bet the Dodgers team total every yeah. day. And like, Michael, you're giving all the betters. As a book guy, my <laughs> stomach is tightening up because I'm like, everything you're saying is right on the money. It's really, you're, there's no defense. It's for the next six months. But let's transition here real quick um, because uh, Matt said you – also pay attention to the Lakers and you're talking oh, yeah. about, you know, one guy, Otani doesn't have to be the guy. Um, that's nice. That's a good feeling. That's a good team. The Lakers are only going to go as far as LeBron is going to take them. Right. I mean, it's LeBron and AD and everybody else, but like 
it all runs on LeBron. They're 12 and a half point favorites at Washington tonight. They're not going to make a run in the playoffs, are they? I've been telling people for months, like, come on, this team is not, I wouldn't consider them a serious contender in the West, would you? No, but I would ask you, Dave, outside of the Nuggets right now, who do you think is? Um, and maybe you, you can throw the Clippers OKC? into that category as actual. I don't think OKC yet is a serious contender. And here's another thing I would say to that. I want the Lakers to line up with OKC in the first round of the playoffs. I don't care if it's 1-8, 2-7, 3-6. Ooh. Of all the matchups that they're looking at facing, if they can get through the play-in tournament, Give them the Thunder. They're three and one against the Thunder this season. They've beat them by double digits in all three of those wins. In the playoffs, the game shrinks to more of a half court game. The game slows down. That plays right into the hands of LeBron James and Anthony Davis. And the Thunder are a young team. I think they're exceeding expectations this year. I think their coach is going to be the coach of the year in the NBA. But I don't, if in a in a seven game series, Give me LeBron and AD over this young Thunder team that's kind of learning to win. It's very similar to me of, of their path last year when they got lucky and they got Memphis in the first round. Um, if they had lost that game to Minnesota in the play-in tournament, which they were losing to start that game in the first half, they would have maybe either missed the playoffs altogether or matched up with the Denver Nuggets in the first round. And we know what happened when they eventually ran into the Denver Nuggets. They got swept. Mm. They've lost actually eight straight to the Nuggets. So – if I'm the Lakers at all costs, I want to avoid the Nuggets, and I want to get the Thunder or the Timberwolves as my opponent, and the Thunder won. I think it's a better matchup for the Lakers. The only game they lost to the Thunder this year, AD didn't even play in that game. And to your point, Dave, yes, you need both of them, but I would argue AD is the more valuable player because of what he does mm -hmm. on the defensive end as well than LeBron. But you need both. You can't have them. And the other thing I'll say is just like last year, they started to get healthy at the right time. Obviously, the new pieces came in and kind of changed everything. Well, most of those pieces came back this year, but now they're getting Gabe Vincent, uh, a guy they haven't had all year, and they, I, they're still 11 games above 500 right now, but stuck in this ninth seed because the West is just stacked this year. Yeah, They're going to get Jared Vanderbilt back here in the next week or so. He, you could argue, outside of Anthony Davis, is their best defensive player. So when you have your full arsenal of players, your full complement of players, uh, the game shrinks in the postseason, becomes more of a half-court game. It slows down. I like the Lakers against the Thunder. I just would prefer – we don't know what's going to happen right now because the top three just keep changing places, the top seeds mm -hmm. in the West between Minnesota, OKC, and Denver. But if they can get out of the play and face OKC, I like them at least going to the next round. I then would love to see a Clippers matchup, Lakers-Clippers. I think that's oh. must see TV. It's the hallway series in the playoffs we always wanted. Uh I could see that series going seven games and a there you go Clippers hat. I like it. I could see that series going seven games and a coin toss on who might win a game seven. But the Lakers certainly have proven that they can beat them, and the Clippers have have proven that they can beat the Lakers, and they've done it more times in the last few years here than they did, you know, in the first thirty years of their existence. But there's a path. My point, Dave. There's a path that I could see them getting back to the Western Conference Finals if it breaks their way. Wow. But. Okay. I don't see them beating Denver. Um, and Do you see anybody beating Denver, Michael? Not really in the West, if I'm being honest. Not Minnesota, not Phoenix if they get in, not Dallas. And I think no. Phoenix, even though they're ahead of the Lakers in the standings, have arguably had a more disappointing season uh, than the Lakers when you look at it. And, mm. you know, I like Frank Vogel. I, I got to know him really well when he was coach here at the Lakers, and he's a really good defensive guy. I just don't think he has the depth on that roster to, to do what he wants and the defensive pieces to be able to do what he wants. And he's been dealing with, you know, either Bradley Beal or, or Booker injured for most of the season. But, mm. no, I'm not, I'm not big on the, the Dallas or Phoenix, none of that. I think, I think if it's Clippers, Nuggets, Western Conference Finals, that could be a really inter interesting series. But to me, it's Denver's division to lose. And I think this collision course between Denver and Boston seems pretty inevitable. This oh, God, Michael. <laughs> oh, my. I mean, like, seriously, like, Denver's going to beat the Celtics, right? Yes. Like, if, that, if that collision yes. course happens. Yes. I think so. Yeah. I think Boston's much better to give them a run for their money this year. But yeah, I think Denver is just Going. played more together. They close out. That's the big thing with the Lakers. Lakers in these last eight games, they're in every game. They're either tied or they're up or they're down one possession late in these games. 
The difference is like Denver knows how to play together. They know how to close out games. They know who's getting the ball. They know what sets to run. Even the Lakers know what sets they're going to run. They just can't stop it. And then on the other end, the Lakers just, you know, if, if it's give the ball LeBron, everyone stand around and watch. Uh, and he pulls up like a fadeaway three or something. That's not what you want to see there. I'd love to see him attack the basket, but with mm. Jokic around the rim, that's not the, the best thing for them. And so I just, I just think Denver knows how to close out games, and I think you would see that in that Boston series. The one thing I will say though is look out for Miami, which I think is like right now in the seven spot, trying trying to sneak into the six. If they you. match up with Boston, you. like you don't. You don't want to see Miami if you're Boston because that's the one team that just when Jimmy when Jimmy Butler's on just knocks you out every time. I agree. Uh, we'll get you out of here on this. Uh, we saw that LeBron's son Bronny is going to be transferring from USC. Clearly, LeBron plays in LA, but there's questions about where he will be, whether he wants to play with Bronny or not. Where are Laker fans with LeBron's future? Is he going to be around long term? Is LeBron serious about going and playing with his son at some point in the near future? How many more years will Will the Laker uniform be on LeBron James? Yeah, and he just said this after his last victory when someone asked him. It was over in Brooklyn, so it wasn't the game over the Raptors last night, Tuesday night. Uh, he said someone asked him, you know, how long he's going to be around. It was the question about Bronny, and he, you know, he was all, he was honest. I'm not not much longer. Um, he doesn't know how long that's going to be. I still think he wants to to wait and play. And he's backtracked from the original comments with Bronny on the same team to just with him on the same court. So he knows that's kind of out of his, out of his control. I still don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that Bronny enters the draft, even though I think he should get another year in college minimum. Just watching him play this year, struggle with USC. Um, I, I just think he could use another year of seasoning, especially coming off of the heart condition that could have ended his career very easily uh, to come back from that middle of the season and try to get back in game shape and overcome all that and come off the bench and do everything he did. You know, he showed, he showed signs and flashes of the player he could be. I just think he needs more time. What's also interesting about him transferring now and seeing these transfer odds is, you know, one of the reasons why he chose USC was so he could play, he could stay home and he could play in front of LeBron and his family whenever he wanted. So unless you're going to UCLA now, uh, I don't, and which I don't see happening. I don't see how that that could possibly be. I see Ohio State as a favorite here, which kind of makes sense. But now you're leaving L.A. and it would be interesting to see if LeBron would leave as well to be closer to his son. I'm not sure. Oh, um, Duquesne, Duquesne, where his former Duquesne, high school teammate Pittsburgh. is now the coach. Yeah, That's that might be one where he says, I want you to take my son and groom into something. We'll see. I see Duke as a, a definitely a possibility as well play and get better experience but i think lebron wants his son the league so if Bronny doesn't go to the draft this year which it looks like right now he's not it looks like he's kind of thinking i also need another year then i see lebron re-signing for another one-year deal he likes to do these one these two-year deals with the option for the second and so i could see him doing another one of those and that probably could be it right two more seasons after this the second season being with Bronny. Uh, and then it would be interesting, too, because Bryce is coming right on his heels, and Bryce might be the better NBA prospect, the better shooter. He's longer. He's taller. Uh, so maybe he wants to see if he can play with both of them, but I think he'll see how his body goes. But he, this guy is nursing so many injuries, and he's pouring millions and millions of dollars into his body in the offseason to try to just get up to play through these these games and these practices. I think if LeBron could just kind of wake up – it was kind of like Phil Jackson back in the day, right, when he only wanted to coach home games and didn't want to go on the road. like. <laughs> If Bron could play 40 games a year and just be ready for the playoffs, I think he'd play five more years like that. But when you got to do this grind with all the, the injuries he has on his foot and his ankle and everything, it, it's it's tough. And so I think I think he wants at least one with Bronny. We'll see about with Bryce and how fast Bryce kind of matures and grows into a player and comes. But uh, that that would be what I what I see, and I see. The Lakers potentially as a team who, regardless of where he is, wanting to draft Bronny to keep LeBron in town. Uh, and, that, and that'll be interesting to see.
Interesting. Michael, thank you for the time. This was awesome. Really appreciate your time. We'll you do it again do soon, again, right? Michael, the chat lit up. Thank you for taking the time. Man. You got it. I love it. I love it. They love the hat. You changed the same hat I had, Dave, and now the Clippers. I like it. So. <laughs> you like, like this it? one? We I'll can keep... get you this Dodger color one. This I like that one. BBB keep... hat. I get yeah, you I like that. One. I'll rock that BBB hat. Love it. Love it. Michael, thank you thank so much. You, we'll Michael. talk soon, right? Thanks, guys. Have a good show. Thanks, That Matt. is Michael Duarte, NBC Los Angeles, joining us here on the Bostonian versus the book. Great to get him on the program. That was a really, really fun conversation. Conversation. Well, the show's so easy when we get guests that just answer these questions. Just like, go. Yeah, <laughs> just we're an hour go. in. We're over an hour in. We just, I can't. I just looked at the clock, yeah, the big said, clock. I can see it. We're an hour and ten minutes into the show. Yeah, that's a show. We said two seconds. We we, we, we talked very very minimal <laughs> here today, but I mean, just to kind of circle back on, on with Michael here for a second with the, it is really interesting. This Shohei Ortani story, I feel like there's a thread that's yet to be pulled. Oh, that when it does, it's going to start to unravel. No, his teammates said they never saw him with a woman. Uh, his teammates had no idea wait, where did this woman come from? Like in America, we would have done a deep dive into this woman. Who is she? How did she get close to him? She's around him a ton now. And He's just married, like out of the blue. Just he's just married, like and, and wow, that th that is really an interesting situation from Otani's standpoint as to where he goes going forward as a U.S. superstar, international superstar. That this best friend is now gone. Did he get replaced by the by the woman? Did, did she get brought in? Or do, like, how did this? How does this whole thing unfold in the next two years? I think we're going to find out a lot very soon. I'm more interested in the gambling stuff. Well, she might be part of it. That's what? my point. She might be part of it. <laughs> Set the sneeze at. Hold on. What? What? What do you mean? She might be part of it. I don't. Understand. She could be in on the. I don't. There's something going on. She might be part of the whole thing. There's something going on. This is not. That's what I mean. There's a thread to be pulled, and when it pulls, it's going to start to unravel. Like, was this an arranged marriage? Is Did he marry her because of her background and who she, who her family is? Is there some relationship going on between Otani, the interpreter, who was gambling with, with who and where and how? I'm he just saying, liked her. there's a lot going on. He just liked her? He just likes her. Okay. As Michael just told us, she was never around. I mean, we do this show every day. Uh huh. My wife doesn't listen to it. Yeah. You know, like you've been I mean, married like, for twenty why, years. Why do you have this to is be not the, this is not the involved. same situation. Because they just, Dave, you have three children with this woman. <laughs> what do you mean? This is not. Is like this is not. The oh same no, thing. I'm saying like, but like, thing. so you have someone that you want kept private they want to stay private this is like me walking in walking in on i'm coming back from chicago going i'm married be like, that wait, would wait. be a hell of a story you'd be like wait what like, like what would, do you mean i, I would yeah, be I'm very surprised <laughs> that's my point it's like wait a minute we haven't seen you with this woman yeah but she's my wife but wait I, i'm confused how did this happen how do you just like show up with a you're married like that's what this is like he just showed up at spring training and was like, hi, I'm married. Uh, okay. Like, yeah. this is not how we do things here, but okay. I'm just saying there's so much unknown about this guy now. And this interpreter gambling story has shown us how little we actually know about Shohei right. Ortani. That there's going to be someone right now is doing a deep dive on his background. Like, I guarantee there's like two or three books being written right now about what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> is that yeah. possible? No. An arranged an arranged marriage. It could have been an arranged marriage. It really possibly could. I'm not putting that past at all. That 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 that's what this is. So just I don't saying. know. I, I like I said, I'm more interested in the other stuff. Yeah, but um, the gambling stuff might be part of it. Well, that would be <laughs> I mean, she might be of part of the gambling thing. That's my point. We don't know yet. Everything's on the table, in my opinion. Twist. Everything's on the table when it comes to this. He, Michael just said his interpreter spent 16 hours a day with the guy. 16 hours a day. It's a lot. Oh. I figure, I mean, you would know if I would think it's 16 hours a day. I mean, I worked aside people for 10 to 12 hours a day 
and I didn't know or care what they did outside right. of work a lot of times. Right. And I would find out stuff later and I'd be like, oh, <laughs> really? Like, I, I didn't see that coming. Just make sure right. they move the first half when those bets come in. Like, please, like, you, you don't always know. There are more questions than answers. Michael was right. I spoke with a reporter today from The Athletic. Okay. Asked a bunch of questions about there's a one, bunch of things. There's one person dig, digging into the background of Otani. There's asked more. a lot of questions. There's still people asking a lot of questions. There's going to be stories that come out. I don't know if it's going to affect them on the field. I don't know. It's not, it's not affecting the team up to this point. Cubby, you got me on that. <laughs> oh. Oh, can't put that one up, Cuff. Can't do it. Take a breath. Oh, oh, that's, that's tremendous. Wow. Well, you got to be involved in the chat. You got to uh, hit yeah. the like button. Go look at the chat. Subscribe. Go look at the chat. Cuffy, that Watch was a good one. The uh, show. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Live on YouTube and pay attention to the chat because yeah, Covey but... just sent a zinger. <laughs> He's good. Glass now against Harrison tonight. Dodgers are minus 225. Bet the over, like Michael said. Yeah. Is that yes. the over team total over? Hold on. What is it? I got the basketball pulled up. What's total in the game? Eight and a half, right? Hold on. Let's hit refresh. Total in the baseball game is. Da, 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 da. Why is my screen frozen? I'll take a look over here. What's the team total? That's more. Oh, I'm more total. interested in the team total. Dodgers team total. I'll say it's five and a half. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Totals eight and a half. Totals eight and a half in a game. Under. Oh, it's, it's juiced. Because huh. of glass now. Yeah. It's it's a, it's a bet on how many runs the, the Giants score. It's basically it. Right. So that's that's the conversation with that. But, you know. Uh, okay. Your Pirates are six and oh. Finally saying it. Minus 140 against what? I mean, you played clown shows. But, I mean, you're, you're What do you mean? You play two clown show teams, but you're you're six to no. Minus one forty, not that heavy. Surprise! I thought this would be heavier than this. Heavier on the road. Nationals are in the conversation as White Sox, A's, Rockies, Nationals. One of those four teams will be the worst team in baseball at the end of the year. Those are your four. Those those are your four worst teams in baseball. I don't. I don't think it's going to be the Nationals. Do you? Okay. It could be, sure. Um, absolutely, absolutely could be. Of course, I'm going to say the Pirates again. Uh, Pirates. Minus 140, though? I got the, Mitch. The thing so far is that, right, they win, 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 six in a row. Every game over. Off. Every game over. They're hitting. Every game over. They're hitting. They got a couple extra inning benefit. Okay, oh, but every problem. game at eight four the, so far they've gone six five seven two nine three nine seven eight four five games five overs right didn't see that coming with the pirates no five overs no did not see that at all no that was surprising five and zero oh, equally surprising <laughs> um they're scoring a lot of runs yeah they're five and zero oh, right. Four in Florida. One. Oh, sorry. The, the, yes, five and oh. Five and oh, right. Washington. Sorry. sorry. Yes, yeah. five and oh. I just want to make sure before they come I, at you. I forget who's played six and who's played five. Five. They haven't, they haven't lost yet. Because Washington had that day off in between for opening day. That's why. They're winning. To, ask the chat. Give them something to vote on. They've been listening to people talk and do all this other stuff. Get the chat involved here. Pirates or Washington. I won't take it personal if you guys take Washington today. I mean, it's obvious that, you know, when you take you take Keller today, the game they're supposed to win, they don't. But they're winning today. I'm voting Pirates in the pool. 140 on the road? Yeah, I'm all right with that. I'm all right with that. With Keller, too. listen, he's going to strike out a bunch today. So I don't know about the over, but, you know, the correlation – Teams hitting like that, you take them. Boom, mm -hmm. over. Makes sense. Yeah, I take them. 
The Rockies are one in five on the run line. Cubs are plus one fifteen on the run line today. This game right. is this game going to be played because the White Sox game got rained out. Oh, it did. So is this game going to get played? It, it, it's a night game, so I'm wondering: is the weather system going to get out of there in time for this game to get played? Mm, I swear, April baseball. Is so yeah. Annoying but, when that but happens. The, but the good thing is, this is the rain storm system that's going to be out of there on the back end. It's sunshine, so Thursday's game, Friday's game against the Dodgers, all should be fine. Yeah, yeah. Day games, Thursday day game, Friday. You're trying to will in this uh, weather, huh? No, it's going to be sunny. I mean, there's no debate that the weather's going to be fine. It's just going to be frigidly cold. <laughs> it's just, it's just going to be blisteringly, amazingly cold. Yeah. So he he okay. So Cub game to be canceled too. All right, that, that that makes sense. Assuming, thank you, Heath. Yeah, I've already had my. I, ha, I, I had two bets involving the White Sox game that's been canceled. Those bets were voided. I didn't even bet the Cubs game because I assume the Cub game is going to get voided. But right. if if it is, I bet it again. <laughs> Just go ahead and bet it again. <laughs> Rinse, repeat. Minus two hundred on the money line. Did you see, by the way, do you see what the Braves, the Braves game got rained out, but do you see what the Braves were on the run line today? No, I did not. Minus 195. On the run line? On the run line. <laughs> Strider? Yeah. Minus 400? Minus 380? It's only April 3rd. Yep. Yep. On the road? On the road. Minus 190. Run line for the Braves today against the White Sox. They got, they got rained out. So that was, I was all in on that. I was money line parlaying that. I was run line parlaying that. I was all in on that. I had multiple things tied to that game that all got voided. Oh, my God. Oh. Yeah. So they're done with this. The, they, this yeah. They, were done they, they draft some books just said, screw it. We're going two and a half. They didn't even do one and a half. They did two and a half run line. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> they're like, they beat them yesterday. The Braves lost to the White Sox yesterday. It was ultimate bounce back spot. Best right. pitcher, Strider, right. Cy Young winner, candidate, right. Strider, pissed off Braves. Look out. That was that was going to be a 10 0 route. That game was going to be, they were going to kill him today. And it got rained wow. out, unfortunately. Oh my God. Uh, one more baseball game. Toronto at Houston. Javier on the bump for the Astros. Only minus 140. Chance to get involved with the Astros today? Toronto got one yesterday. Mm -hmm. See that? Yep. I don't know. I liked under yesterday. I think I like under today. Okay. Uh, let's talk a little Five hockey. Guys, I'm not sure. There are three games in hockey worth pointing out today. Rangers, Devils. Rangers laying $2 on this. Any value on the dog here? I don't think so. I don't know. I'm so not impressed with the Devils. Did you see the way they lost the game to the Penguins? Yeah, but they lost. The Rangers lost five two to the Penguins in the last game. I know. Pittsburgh so, went into New York and took a boat. Took them down. The Penguins are actually still alive. They are. The Penguins the are still alive to make yeah. the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Have an unbelievable stretch right now in the next three games. Win, 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 and they might actually get in. And I don't know if I want them in. Oh, I don't know. Fair. I don't feel like they could win in the playoffs and like this is when your team like the Steelers gets in and you go I, it doesn't matter they're not going to win so I don't know if it's better or worse the Devils on a, on a back to back cover, uh, auto just pointed that out that's true Devils are on a back to back lost the game Correct. last night yeah uh, Tampa Bay at Toronto a little playoff potential here we'll see what Toronto's made of right it plays the dog but you know, it's a bet against Toronto on the regular. Yeah. You know, so I don't know. I I, I think first lean there is the dog. So they've got 89 points. Over to Tampa, Toronto, over to. Over Probably. To six and a half. I need a losing streak out of the Lightning. 96 and a half because I'm on under 96 and a half points. And they've oh. played 74 games. There are eight games left. And they, I need them to get just seven points. Eight points kills me. How many games left? Eight. 
eight games and you need them to not get eight points, I'm in trouble. I mean, just let's look at the schedule quickly. Let me tell you when you're going to lose it. Then I'd bet against it. I was going to say that's what. So now yeah. you got to get to that point, yeah, yeah. right, where you start betting. They them. play at Toronto, at Montreal, at Pittsburgh for the next three. Then that's they're at not home. An easy stretch right now. Then home for Columbus and home oh. for Ottawa. Ooh. At at Washington, and they end with home for Buffalo and home for Toronto. The that dream could come would be, down to the last game. The dream would be if it came down to Toronto. I could just, come down to the last game. I uh, just go ahead and hammer the other side. That would be that would be the the ideal dream would be that if that were to happen. That's yeah, that's you the dream. You need the Maple Leafs to win today in regulation. You don't even want Tampa to get a point today. No, no, no. I I need regulation losses. I need like three of them. Right, like three of them. So, oh my. Oh, interesting. Toronto wins. They pretty much wrap up the three spots. So maybe there's an incentive for the Maple Leafs to win today. That would be great to take care of business at home. Uh, and then finally, this is the game of the day: Edmonton at Dallas. Minus one twenty. Second period over is a guarantee. Third Hold period. Hold on there, Mister Guarantee. Third period over is a guarantee. Oh God. These here. two teams. I'm kidding, obviously. All right, just make sure in case anybody clips no. it for us. Or puts Go ahead. It out. But I like it, though. I, I I do like it. I think it's a, it's a good play. You like the game over? No. I like Dallas sidewise. Second period I'm over biased. one and a half. Third period over one and a half. But I do not like the game over. No. 4-2 final. Wait a second. You like the second period over and the third period over. Huh? But you don't like the game over. Nope. So we got to bet first period under. If you want to. 4-2. That situation. That's the only way your math adds up. Correct. Mr. Math Professor. Or three and three. Three and three. Three goals second period, three goals in the third period. Or one or two, two, two. Be a scoreless first period. Or two, two, two. Two, two, two gets you home. Over first period, over second period, over third period. All right. Six, four, two final. Could happen. So. But I think second period and third period overs are a better play. Personally. Bet it or book it. I'll give you – I'll say I want Dallas. Bet it or book it. Interesting. Um, well, you hesitated. Yeah, because I want to – People give the hockey guys something to vote for. Hold now. on. I need I need to see – I just need to see something here real, real quick. All before right. Give, I, it, before, give, give the hockey guys a Hold vote. on. Before I – Because they all you. voted for the Pirates. 83% voted for the Pirates today. Um. So we're looking at – yeah, that's my problem. It's Picard in net for Edmonton. Yeah, give me give me Ottinger in Dallas. The goalie situation I, it was in flux with Edmonton. That's why I didn't want to take the take Oilers. Okay. I take Dallas. Yeah. Dallas at home with Ottinger. Yes. All right. Take, we got, take we Dallas. got a Ooh, couple of people's a comment. Okay. Wow. All right. Okay. That's fine. That's good. Yeah, I would that's take why Dallas. We have, poll. we have you guys vote. We'll get an instantaneous uh, feedback. A couple NBA games. The Lakers that we talked about on the road against Washington on a back-to-back -back for Washington, back-to-back -back for the Lakers. Lakers were 13 and a half points last night. I, I, I would never in my life lay 13 and a half points with the Lakers, even though they covered a 13-point number last night. Against Toronto. Against Toronto. Who's the Colorado Rockies of basketball of right the now, NBA, or the right. Oakland A's yep. of basketball. Toronto is the worst team in the league. Yeah. My God, it's ten, oh wait, it's ten to two angels over the Mar over the Marlins. My under 78 and a half. A good range. start for that. Awesome start for that. That's an <laughs> awesome start. They don't have a win a week into the season. They That's suck. pretty good. And they're getting crunched today. Pretty so, good. Yeah. Not not what you want if you're a Marlins fan. They sorry, Covey. They suck. Yeah. They suck big time. That was I'm glad I, I I called that right, at least to start the year so far for that. But anyways, Lakers are not covering this number in my mind. No. I took the 13 and a half last night. Boy. I was waiting for a spot to fade the Lakers and I found it. Okay. It was today. I was like, where am I going to fade the Lakers? I got to fade the Lakers. I'm looking at it. I was like, you know what? Washington has been winning games, let alone covering. They've been winning games as dogs. Mm. What's the motivation tonight for the Lakers? They have to keep winning. Yeah, but just win. But but win by fifteen. Kill them. Oh like, yeah, just, no, just win. No, that's the, right. It's the spread. Just win the game. They just have to win the game. They have to yeah. win the game though. Right. They can't but, not win this game. Right. And it's back to back, old team. 
Washington's young, tired, or young and hungry. It's the Lakers coming in. Be a lot of Laker fans in the building. It'll piss them off. Wizards been playing hard. I like the Wizards. Line going up on Boston at home against OKC. Can you explain that to me? Obviously, uh, somebody not playing for OKC. It's I 11 so. now. It's 11 now. It's 11 now. So what, SGA's out? Obviously. Yeah. Damn. Yep. Whew. Yeah. Bye-bye. But the I total see. dropped three points, too. It's 228. Oh, both SGA and Jalen Williams are out. Hey, there we go. thank you, LL. But yes, DeJuice, do not bet the Celtics. I, I, I would I would agree on that. Do not bet the Celtics. Uh-uh. I, I was going to take the dog at eight and a half. Right. So I, going to, I saw it go to nine. I was like, okay, now it's 11. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I'm staying away from this. I want no part of this. Mm. First half team total. Find out what it is, Nick. If it's 58 to 62, bet over. Not sure where it is. It's a high. Calvin and Hobbs for his thing. That's Isn't great. Tom? That's a great. It's tremendous. I used to read the Calvin and Hobbs was like must every funnies. single yeah. day. In the funnies, of course. Kids, the funnies is a reference to the comic section of a newspaper. On Sundays. On fun... Sundays. It was really, it was very. It was, it was in color on Sundays. So it was called the funnies, but it was black and white every other day of the week. Correct. Because it was too expensive to print in color. <laughs> it was very expensive, apparently. But that was a big deal. Oh, was God. Sunday breakfast was was reading so the comic funny. section. You you have to watch Masters of the Air, by the way, on Apple TV. You gotta watch because there's so many things that you look back on and you look at how life used to be, and it's wild. Things you that were too back at it like good or bad. Or, or, or I mean, I wasn't alive during it, so I I, I just it's just so funny to go back oh, and, and like realize back. Well, it's World War II. So it's oh. it's back back. I mean, it's a long time. It's 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 our yeah. grandparents, you know, generation. But right. it's just such an interesting look at society and life in the way, you know. There's just a lot about friendship. There's a lot about guys in friendship that I think we all could go back and learn a lot about about connectivity, about caring for each other, and the way that these devices have separated us. Like we're supposed to be so connected, but we're so not. We're so disconnected by everything. Right. Oh, by the way, 59 and a half over. Yes. First half team total Celtics over. Bang. Like that a lot. At home. So at home. Yeah. Yes. 59 and a half over. Uh, and then Cleveland and Phoenix. I mean, Phoenix has to win, but the number's coming down. So we had the guys. And again, you can join us in the show in the chat or you can leave comments after the show on the YouTube channel or on these fantastic shorts that are being produced. Uh, people are leaving comments. We had some of the Cleveland people coming at us a little bit yesterday for the uh, comments about the calves. Shut up. All of you. It's fine. Just it's have so them leave a comment. Dumb. It's so dumb. Appreciate all of you. Somebody Donna actually Mitchell. on the Twitter yesterday told me to lay off. The South Point hot dogs, you fatso. It disappeared. The comment disappeared, but it was under one of my posts. And I was like, this is awesome. I showed Jessica. I said, boy, oh boy, when wow. people really start to come out, this is fun. This is great. But getting, getting me, the, my messages look out. Well, that's, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can, you can email us and, you know, ask the BBB. At gmail.com. And, and, and just comment. so you guys know, when you do that, just like there's a guy who one, one, I'll just say is uh, SoCal DJ has created this really cool way to email us on the website, the BBB show.com. We're yep. getting multiple people who are sending messages that way. It's awesome. So we get it as an email that comes into the ask the, B, the BVB, uh -huh. but it's really people are, it's really simple because they can put their information in and they can send it and it's, it's super, super cool. So there's a couple that I'm going to read here. My favorite thing about today uh, in, in bonus time, but it it's just, I don't know. It's, it's funny because people forget that it's just me and you. It's just me and you guys. So if you're going to go and fucking cry to Dave, you're, you're just crying to Dave. Okay. You, you're not crying to anybody. Okay. So going like Dave, your co-host is such a jerk. I can't stand him. Like it goes to me, you fool. 
Like, I see that, you dummy. I read it to him. If like, you send it to me, I read it to him. We, I call there, him there's up. There's nobody else, guys. There's nobody <laughs> else. There's no, like, person behind. There's no boss. There's nobody. There's, there's no puppet master here, okay? It's him and me, and that's it. So, like, cry to somebody else. Like, who are you crying to? Why are you being mean to me? Don't come in my DMs then, dude. Hey, don't come at me in my DMs. And when I smack you and you're like, I can't believe how mean he was. Okay, dude. Sorry. Don't come at me and say, you don't know what you're talking about. And I tell you, you're a dumb fuck. Okay. That's what happens. He said it will. All right. That's what happens. Earlier, okay. I That's did. what happens. And then you're going to go and run to who? Who are you crying to? Who are you talking to? Like, you're literally a schizo. You're talking to like a ghost. So like, remember this guys, like it's just us. Eric is with us when we do live shows, but, but we're a, a unit, a, a very small group that produces this. So anything you send, anything you post, we see it, him and me, that's it. <laughs> Put the glasses on. I can see it. I love it. You guys come on the show. Like, listen, emails come on the show. We're trying to be productive here. Karens, bunch of Karens. Whoa, goodness gracious! Watch it. There's a lot of Karens that take offense to that. No, I would too, personally. <laughs> if I was Karen, I'd be, I'd be really mad about that. I'd be like, you know, but like Kens get it too because the guys are now called Kens, so the Kens get hit on it too. It's like, what the? It's like I just my mom just named me that. What do you want me to do? I'm getting hit on that. It's not my fault that my name, my, my, my parent named me that. So. <laughs> Oh, too good. Unbelievable time. Go Cavs. Go, go Cavs, Cavs tonight. Yeah, go Cavs. Time for better. Family. All right. So we've got the guys in the chat sweating out the, the Brewers right now. It's too funny. It's tremendous. They, they all were on the nerfy for the Red Sox game that cashed. Oh, that's already done? Yeah, Red Sox A's already ner a nerfy in the first inning. Nice. So they got that. That was nice to hit there. Uh, How many Wizards plus at that game today. Nobody. No, nobody. Not even Red Sox fans. Like last night, Red Sox fans were there. There's nobody there today. Empty ballpark today. Wizards catching 13 and a half at home against the Lakers. Better to book it. Oh, principal play. Like you got to take the points. Team crap. I can't say book it because I, 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 I I don't I don't want to take the other side. This is a bet. Mm. Over 223 bucks in the Grizzlies. Why? Because the, Grizz the Memphis is an over machine. But aren't machine. the Bucks an under machine? No, not anymore. Bucks are an over machine now. Bucks have been going over a ton, but Memphis oh, is on. just Memphis. No. This total is 218. It is it's down to 218. Beautiful. Take it. That's great. You're a much better number than me. All right, I, I, I'm going to trust that that move was for a reason. I think, you, I mean, I would book under uh, 223, not knowing anything. It's, it's 218, 218 and a half. Current number is wow. 218. How about so if that? You can bet over. You bet over five yeah. points better, better than, than me. Well, bet yeah. last night. Memphis is 23 and 16 on the road, seven and three to the over over their last ten. Milwaukee has gone over. Three of the last four and six of the last eight. There you go. The, these teams are over teams. Like I go ahead, bet under. These teams are over teams, much like last night. You saw it with with the the Cavs last night, even without Donovan Mitchell against Utah. I think flew right. over. Yep, two thirty landed. Yeah, two, that was closed, a good one. Closed at two twelve. Yeah. Landed two thirty one. I believe was the final total last night between those two teams. And then finally, this is dicey because I don't know if it's going to happen or not with the Cubs, but Cubs Dodgers money line. At plus 115. Cubs are winning if they play. If they play. They got to play. I don't know if they're going to play it or not. Uh, I said my first two bets of the day have been voided because of the brain out with the Braves. Weak. I can't. I just don't like April when this happens. I think about all the people that are coming up and going, ah, what does that do with my ticket? Can I rebet this? And blah, 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 blah. We mm -hmm. said nobody pitchers change today. Um, I mean, who's going to win? The, I mean, the Dodgers are winning. Yeah, and the Cubs are going to win. This is a season D's parlay. You could do this on a regular basis, I think. Um, against the Rockies. The against the Rockies. Not really with the Cubs, but against the Rockies. 
I mean, look at people. I mean, a bunch of people have kind of talked to me about like, you know, why are you just picking on these four teams and keeping on betting against them? Because I'm gonna, so I'm gonna bet against them until the price gets to be too expensive. Because at some point. The, the Rockies are going to be too expensive to, to fade. The right. A's will be too expensive to fade. And right. we did it all of last year. The A's got hot for that two-week period and blew the whole thing to sky high. Right. It just torched everything. So as of right now, you just have to figure it out as to the prices are in line, make it worthwhile right now. The Dodgers will be 3 and $4 favorites for the whole summer. Oh, it's going to go only higher. Yeah. I mean, if Strider... <laughs> Is minus four hundred on the road today at home? Dear Lord, like we're gonna have to figure out the different calculators. Um, <laughs> Parlay pieces only. Yeah, that's gonna that's gonna be interesting. Um, before you get us out of here, uh, it just came across that Angel Reese just declared for the WNBA draft. Nice. Okay, so uh, heck of a draft. They're going Angel in. Angel Reese. They're together. going in together. Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese could be one two in the draft. Wow. Good for business. Very good for business. If you guys are with us live on YouTube or Twitter, don't move. If you're with us on Sirius XM or on sports grid, thank you for being here. Remember roll call Thursday tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. no show Friday. So we're going to roll call Thursday. Be here for Thursdays. BVB. The rest of you stick around. Bonus time starts now. Mm -mm -mm. Who has a second pick in the draft? Do, you, do we know? WNBA draft. I don't actually. Um, let, me, let me look. Second pick in the draft is going to be controlled by. Um, let's see. Just show me the draft order. My goodness gracious. That why is their website so complicated? Um, okay, so the draft order: the Fever, the LA Sparks. Oh, how about that? So there LA can Angel Reese in LA is good for business. Good for that's business. that's good for business. That's good for business for sure. Put Angel Reese there, and then you've got uh, Cameron Brink, who is going to be probably the third pick then in that, and she would go to Chicago, mm. which would be good for her to go there. And then let's see. Oh, this mock draft has Angel Reese going to the Lynx with the seventh pick in the draft. Okay. Interesting. So I guess she was expected to come out. So that would be – that would make – Cameron Brink, the Stanford six foot four senior who's got all the endorsement deals. Mm. Her and Caitlin Clark are like the faces of, of the women's basketball endorsement deal. That'll be good. It's like, listen, it's all good if it if it grows the game. And it and should. I mean, those just, three, just those three should join. Yeah. Brink, Spread Reese, out. and yeah. and and Caitlin. Yeah. Um, should definitely do it. To go back to real quick about the baseball betting. That's what baseball betting is. Like for you guys that want variety and spice and all these fun different things, you may get bored if you're watching what we do. It, 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 baseball betting is repetitive. It's mundane. But it's, I had to learn. But this is another one of the school of Sherapan things. I had to learn that. Like I had to learn that last year late. Like I, I literally saved my entire baseball year. I ended – Come August 1st, you heard me on this show and other shows crying about how bad I was getting my teeth kicked down my throat betting baseball. And then I got really boring and I started to bet the Dodgers on the road over every single time. And I literally made back, I bet I faded the A's every single time. Yep. Those are two bets I made almost every single day and I was winning five out of seven bets. Right. And so I got my, I won money tiny a bit. Tiny, tiny bit, half a unit. I won in baseball last year, betting the entire season. But I was down. The amount so much. of bets, oh, was insane. Three hundred like, plus bets. That's a ton of volume for a half a unit. <laughs> Ridiculous amount of work to just come out ahead. But the name of the game, a lot of times, with the everyday procedure that you're following for the juice, is to come out ahead. Better than break even. It's hard. <laughs> Baseball juice eats you up. But now I know, though. I'm I'm, I'm copying right. the same thing. There's four teams I'm, I'm identifying. I'm going to fade those four teams aggressively as we roll. I mean, the Dodgers are going to be very difficult to bet against this year, but they're also going to be very expensive to bet on. So you got to find, like, the second and third tier teams that are going to be right. just, you know, the Braves are going to be my team. I'll tell you right now, I'm going to be in love with the Braves this year. They're going to be tremendous. 
Yeah, but if the books are going to price you out of the market when they're on the road, they're minus 400. No, I'm ridiculous. astounded yeah. by this ridiculous. number. I can't wait after the show. <laughs> I'm going to text the guy that does the baseball numbers and, two and go, what the hell? It's April 3rd. This is like August 3rd number. Right. When we know, like, we got this, you know, they're, <laughs> what? It ain't even good weather. Right. Like, it's Fair. Like, how, what the hell is going on? White Sox oh. suck. Uh, one super chat, Steve Anderson, a respected news journalist just said, Josh Allen is the modern day equivalent to Dan Marino and I'm about to lose it. <laughs> what? Is he serious? I don't Mr. know. Mr. Anderson. Well, I think, the what? Comparison, I think the comparison is unbelievable arm talent, no championships. Oh. I think that's the, that's the, that's the comparison. Yeah. Marino. I it's mean, not, man, it's not the, it's not the talent of Dan Marino. It's that Dan Marino never won a championship. The career path. Yeah. The career on a team that competed, but never got over the hump and yeah. only got the one Super Bowl. Yeah. And never got back. Dan Marino. Oh man. Yeah. I make it so it's sad. Thinking about it. Favorite thing about today is what? Um, so I started the show off mentioning that last night, you know, I just got a call and had to get up and, you know, go deliver this thing. I mean, it was incredible. And I just rode passenger and, you know, was the confirmation of everything. And it's nuts. But before that, we had a family meeting. And the <laughs> last time we had a family meeting, I found out we were having another baby. You you undersold this. You need to explain <laughs> I got a text that said he calls me in the car. Right? I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell the story of All calling right. you in the car, but I get a text while I'm on sports grid from the group text, me and the girls. Family meeting called tonight at eight o'clock. I'm like, oh, I'm on commercial with what's on. I'm like, what is this? Nobody's in the house. I don't know what's going on. I send a text and it says eight o'clock Sapporo. I'm like, oh. We're having dinner. We're having sushi. This is great. What the hell is happening right now? And I start to think they're setting me up. It's a meeting in a public place, so I can't even do anything. Like, this could be trouble. I don't know who's driving, what's happening. So Jessica comes home from work. Kendall's here. Kelsey is not. I'm like, I come downstairs. I get the text. I'll be home in 10 minutes. Be ready to go. Where are we going? And what are we talking about? <laughs> the last time we had a family meeting, you told me we were having another kid. I'm not ready to have no more. I don't want no more kids. I love my three kids. I don't need no more kids. It can't even be happening. Please. And Jessica coyly plays it off. Well, I'm not having another kid, but I don't know. And I said, this isn't even, what are you doing right now? This isn't funny. Get in the car and we're driving. And, you know, I, I, I say this all the time. I love you like a brother. I talk to you so much. I said, I'm calling P-Roll. She goes, what are you going to say? And I go, I don't know. But I said, if you're, if I'm going to get whacked. <laughs> That's what it felt I, like. I'm on speakerphone. I'm like, am I on speakerphone? You're like, yeah. Like, Who's yeah. in the car? He's like, Jessica. I'm like, I'm not saying a fucking word. <laughs> I'm just, I'm not saying anything. Said, like this is, this I, is all bad. There's nothing I, good about what I'm about. To, but this is all bad for me. Nothing is good. Right. No. So I call you and I go, we're having a family meeting. They're driving me to the, to the, to the, to the sushi joint eight o'clock. Who he goes, who's in the car. I said, Jessica's driving. Kendall's in the back seat. She's only 10. She's too young to put that rope over and take me out. So I know I'm sitting in the passenger seat. And I'm going to make it to the restaurant. But I don't know who's going to be there. Kelsey's we're, Kelsey's meeting us there. I'm like, oh, okay. What's happening right now? So a million things as a girl dad go through my mind. Like, this is, this is crazy family meeting. Okay, sit down. And they're asking about, like, the Dodger game. And did the Pirates play today? And for 10 minutes, I'm, like, pretending, like, why are we all here right now? And finally, I go, all right, what's the family meeting about? And Kelsey goes, I got a call today. I have an opportunity to go to Felicia and play softball. What? I tried to get Kylie on the way. I texted her, and I said, what? 
What is going on right now? And Kylie held strong. <laughs> she said, I'm not telling you anything. And I said, is this good news or bad news? was in the chat like, trashing you. This is phenomenal. <laughs> yeah. So I texted her, and then I snuck a, a side bar with Kendall. Mm -hmm. I said, listen, it's okay. You can tell me. She goes, I'm not telling you anything. Oh. I was like, whoa. All right, stick together. So I found out that she's going to have an opportunity to talk to the coach, see if she likes the school. So while you're in Chicago this weekend, I am going to be in Philadelphia. I'm going to Philly to, and Kelsey is going, she's flying directly to Newark the day before oh. I'm going to Philly okay. because Kylie has a double header in Philadelphia nice. at Jefferson university. Nice. So I'm going to see her play on Saturday. If anyone is around and available, meet us at the Felician softball games against Jefferson University in Philadelphia. I'll be sitting there all afternoon watching softball. You're more than welcome to come hang out. Anybody in the Philadelphia, I'd love to meet you in person. That would be awesome. Mm. And then she's going to hang out with her sister for a couple of days and see what, um, you know, we're going to talk to the coach. We're going to see what happens. And, you know, I may have two kids across the country uh, mm. in the fall. Very which, cool. Which uh, my favorite thing about today is that we'll find out when you um, come back. Yeah, it's I, I'm I'm coming back uh, Monday, so we'll figure out exactly. I think I'll do the show like like I did. Not maybe from my brothers because my brother's not going to be there. Oh, he's going okay. camping. Oh, the weekend. so okay. I'm going to actually miss seeing brother Dan. Um, but I'm going to see the girls obviously and see the coaches and all that other stuff. So it's a big deal, man. Heck it's, yeah, it is. it's just another one of those things that you want to talk about always forward, never straight. I thought she was done. Right. I, she, she's coaching this team. She's helping coach these young girls. She got everything. And your, your whole family's in the chat. What? <laughs> oh, there's Brother Dan. I found out he was coming and scheduled a camping weekend. See this mother? Dan, I need the key. I need the key to the house. I'll stay there. I'll let the dogs out. I need the key to the house. It's Hook too much. Up. It's tremendous. Um, and WrestleMania is in Philadelphia. Oh, God. On Saturday and Sunday at Lincoln Financial That's Field. all you. So I may actually end up seeing Pat and Gumpy and, and, and oh. the boys uh, in Philadelphia as well. Oh, that's so cool. It's it it could be it could be pretty wild. It could end up being a really fun weekend. <laughs> someone just sent me a someone just sent me a DM. They're at the A's game. He said, "There's ten people here right now." <laughs> that's too good. There's ten people at the game right now for the A's and the Red Sox. That's too much. Um, my favorite thing about today is the the, the new way you guys are sending us email messages. So we got a really cool message yesterday from a, a teacher who teaches uh, kids with autism, thanking us for talking about that yesterday, saying that that was really special that people weren't acknowledging Autism Awareness Day. So they were really usually thankful for that. Uh, West for, uh, WV Punch Drunk is coming to town. He, oh. says, he says a note saying, I'll be in town. I want to sit up and, and hang, hook up with you guys. So really easy way. Sometimes people forget about email addresses or whatever. You guys can just go to thebvbshow.com, check out the website. There is a form there to fill out. You can send us the email. Comes to Dave and I. We can get the email. So that I really love this new feature that SoCal DGN has created because it's very easy for you guys to communicate with us now. Love it. You can request hats that way. You can do yes. all. It, it's very, very, very cool. So, Dan, I'm not going to put that on the screen. Don't ever tell people where keys are. Come on now, dude. <laughs> like, what, like, what are you doing, man? Come on, man. Like, I know That's we're all family. I know we're family, but like, come on, we're family. Bro. Like I can find out where you are probably where you live, probably like in three Google searches, like be careful. Right. <laughs> don't tell people where you live and don't tell people where keys are. Don't do that. So uh, roll call Thursday, tomorrow, big be day. here tomorrow. Big show. A lot of fun. We got a special guest tomorrow, Dave. We got a special guest tomorrow. Somebody who was very influential in the legalization of sports betting in the state of New Jersey. Yeah. Looking um, forward to that. It's funny. He texted me just now about 30 minutes ago. Okay. Th thinking it was today. That's how messed up he is. I said Thursday. Today's not Thursday. He just reread everything and said, oh, sorry, that's tomorrow. Yes. 
listen, he's got a lot going on. When you just open a joint in a state, a lot of things happen. Joe Brennan, Prime Sports, tomorrow on yes. GBB. Roll Call Friday. Hope to see you guys here tomorrow. Dave, Matt, back with you for the last show of the week. Roll Call Thursday, tomorrow for the BVB. Shout out to the guy in the desert, too.